Hey everybody, Kane here and welcome to another video of Art of Conquest. In this one, we are going to talk about the hero Drac. So I've tested multiple things on him, multiple ability sets, artifacts, equipment, all that kind of stuff. And I found a pretty decent build for a very weak Drac. Now, what do I mean by weak? My Drac does not have very high research. My drag only has, I guess, a subpar research-ish. Because I finished everything up until tier 12. And I have almost finished tier 16. In which case, it would add me a pretty decent amount of uh, attack value and HP. Which will further scale his ability to do damage. Because currently, this is like one of the very few heroes which scale incredibly from his attack value stats and he has like hundreds of percent of damage bonuses and stuff like that it's crazy it's crazy how this one hero scales so the equipment i'm using the flawless drake set basically this one grants this hero plus one to all abilities his abilities are insane so you would want to have the entire set equipped. Again, his abilities are insane. Even plus one ability on like half of these abilities is going to be insane. So let alone all of them, just crazy. Aside from that, we use 30% attack speed bow. We use um, a helmet that grants him a shield every 12 seconds. They can stack. And when the shield persists, increase his physical damage. So the more HP he has, the more of the shield he gets, and the more likely it's going to stay, making him do more damage. Aside from that, there are no good armors apart from the arcane armor, which improves his magic resistance. Aside from that, you could probably use this one, but I don't know if evade chance is really that good. Aside from that, uh, the artifact and prism we're going to talk in just a second. So abilities. I have two ability sets that I'm using. One of them is Dragon Invigoration level 6, Energy Spear 10, Weakness Detection 10, Surging Flames and Draconic Charge at level 2, and Hardened Dragon Hide at level 8. What this does is it grants him a lot of resistances. A lot. And of course, some lifesteal, evade chance, which can stack. I'm not sure if like, these are incredibly powerful. But essentially, this resistance is what we kind of want to go for. Aside from that, his abilities are pretty powerful in terms of like this one. It's insane. Like it buffs so much that even this particular one, like if we can see... He has the 40% damage, attack speed scaling by 40%. And if we awaken the potential on him for every, uh, well, for every energy, rather, he has increased his damage further and crit damage by an additional 8%. So his damage is already 40% at level 6, right? So if we get 5 of the energies, he's going to get 40% from this. 40% from this, so basically just his passive is granting 80% damage, 40% attack speed, 60% accuracy, and 40% crit damage. It's insane. J just one ability is granting this. And then, of course, we have these two abilities which are incredibly powerful. So the energy spear, this particular one procs damage before this spear even lands in terms of graphics. And in some of those cases, if you're using him for farming resources or Shadow Legion or whatever, like you're not going to be able to get resources from that wall because the wall just disappears before his damage land. I don't even know how to explain it. I've missed so much resources because of this hero. So I've even stopped using him for sieges. Yes, it, it's, it's that insane. So aside from that, um, in terms of potential, what you're going to get is another, say, damage prop. A thrown energy spear will continue to emit shockwaves around it. 
Now, I didn't uh, say check how many. I think it's every one or two seconds. But essentially, what this does is it helps you kill enemy heroes or frontline. Majority of the time, I would want to have a hero that would reliably kill enemy backline heroes or frontline without me requiring to cast abilities there or stuff like that. So basically, this particular hero is full passive, and the only other potential that you could select is Draconic Charge, which is, I guess, a single target attack, like not AoE-based like Drac. And the thing about this one is it's a lot better if you have a very strong Drac, which is impossible with a low level and very weak research. So I kind of go for the Energy Spear, and it seems to be performing well. Aside from that, weakness detection. Now, this particular ability is probably one of the craziest abilities I have ever seen. Drag and his dragon deal 8% additional damage to enemies for every 1% HP they lose. So, this is not saying that drag and dragon's HP. This is saying that of the enemy's HP. Meaning, if, say, an enemy hero drops down to 50%, drops down to 1%, Drag is going to do 400 to 800% more damage or additional damage or whatever way this one scales. So it's insane. Like, that is why some Grimm's tank 60 trillion. This is why Solaris tank 100 trillion. Why some Frontlines tank, like, 200 trillion. Like, this ability scales from enemies HP. And that is crazy. So if I would have a higher level drag and a few other buffs and bonuses, like this guy would likely clear stuff at a similar level to that of an Avril, or somewhere not too far behind. And then, of course, he increases crit rate, but with potential 70, for every crit that he and the dragon inflicts on the enemy, they also deal additional damage equal to 8% of enemy's max HP. Again, um, for every crit, right, for every crit, right, so if we have energy spear, which does huge area damage, if we have energy spear emitting shock waves, which also can crit, so we're having more procs and more ability for the crits to happen and for him to do more damage. So keep in mind there is some sort of a synergy between his abilities. Now the other build that I have and used for quite a while is Dragon Invigoration 5, Spear and Weakness 10, Draconic Charge 9, and then Hardened Dragon Hide at 4. So we're losing some portion of damage from his ultimate. We're losing 20% resistances from this. Now that can be pretty huge, but it depends. Because we're using an Hourglass. And what Hourglass states is if he receives fatal damage, excuse me, he will be unselectable for 8 seconds with his attack speed reduced by 70%. Now, that is a pretty huge reduction in terms of attack speed on a hero that kind of scales with attack speed, right? So it's, it's pretty huge. So we don't want him to be um, unselectable or receive fatal damage in the very beginning of the battle. So we want to add some resistances to him for him to perform quite a bit better. Right, so that is why I kind of chose this build. I mean, single target damage, I did not notice him do that much for my weakish drag. So it was pretty much like these few abilities. So aside from that, what other artifacts can you use? People at a very high tier level use Draconic Spear. Like, I use this for events as well. It's crazy how overpowered this one is. It scales to 5 energy pretty quickly. Insane amounts of attack speed, insane amounts of buffs and bonuses. Like, it's insane. All I can say is that it's insane. But 
if you don't have any way to prevent this hero from getting stunned, disarmed, and all of those things, having a very high damage drag is not going to be performing that well for you. So whenever I use this in PvP, for more than half of the time, my drag was not even moving, right? Like, he was not doing anything. No damage was landing, nothing. He was just disarmed into stun, into Avril stun, into something else, into dragon taunt or, or whatever. Like, he was almost non-existent in terms of the battles. And, I mean, that could be based on placements. It could be based on what other people have. Depends who you fight and many other things. But from what I've seen, this makes him very susceptible to CC. And a person like myself with not a very strong drag cannot afford downtime on this hero. Like, I just cannot afford it. So aside from that, that is why I'm using Hourglass. But you can use this if you're in a higher tier level. And it might be good. Aside from that, I've seen people use Sapiel. But mainly people use Sapiel if they're facing Liches. Which I think half of the meta right now is honestly just Liches. So you get accuracy, you get damage, and you get more damage to undead units. So basically... A free 50% damage bonus just against Lich. So you're going to be clearing their stall sites faster. You're going to be doing a bit more damage to their heroes. But again, susceptible to CC. You can knock this hero from being useful for quite a while. I've tested Halkian's Edge. It performed decently, but not as good as it's performing on Lee for me. So my Lee still has this particular artifact. As well as I tried Blood Moss Bite, but the only thing that he really did that well, I guess, is damage to heroes, which, or rather with which, he was a tiny bit easier killing some of the heroes if he managed to land a spear into the backline, I guess, before he was being stunned and all those kinds of things. Aside from that, very susceptible to CC. And I think think that's pretty much it. I don't know if I really tried anything else. But yeah, that is why I'm using this. In terms of Prism, I'm currently using Overwhelm. He's able to proc high amounts of damage just by himself. He is close to Avril, so he's going to be receiving a little bit of a nudge from her to uh, damage enemies which are far lower in terms of HP. So he's going to be able to do a decent amount more damage. Aside from that, I've seen people use Warlike. I think that's what it was called. Uh, Devastating Strike, Verling Blade, and I think Entangling Nightmares. But personally, for this uh, Potato Drag, I think Overwhelm is by far performing a lot better. Because, of course, more HP, uh, a decent amount of attack value still and getting some bonuses based on where it's placed and who he's attacking. As well as, I guess, some resistances as well, because if uh, lower HP is hitting him, he's not going to be taking as much. In terms of other core, I'm using him on a level 6 Spectral Explosion. So that is why some of his damage might be pretty huge. In terms of Hero Mastery, I'm using him on Arcane 2. And using him on Arcane, or rather Rage 10, um, god damn it, uh, Rage 8, right? So this is what I'm using him at. 12% physical resistance reduction, which kind of helps him scale this particular hero further as well to be able to do more damage to gladiators, frontline, and all that kind of stuff. In terms of armory... I'm using this particular lance, 25% physical damage and attack speed, 25%, stacking three times. It says over 25,000, but it's not that. It's, it's only three stacks um, for every three abilities cast. So that is what I currently am using. So let's check a couple of battles that uh, I, I guess was uh, done on me in terms of defense. 
to the first one is that happened an hour ago. So I have about 80%, 75% alive. In terms of damage, you see level 70 drag appearing at the very top. Enemy taking trillions of damages. And of course, a decent portion of healing. So just to be certain that you guys know what I'm talking about, this is Hourglass. This is Overwhelm. These are the abilities that I have used, you know, not to make sure that I'm, you know, lying to you or any of those sort of things. So, uh, one moment, let me just make it 0.5. So this was Burst versus Burst. Now, I've activated graphics, right? So we have to try to figure out where the spears land. So one, two, I think three spears, four spears or five. Now, we have Avril damaging the dragon, and we have two or three spears of Drac also reaching the dragon. Now, I do have Lee. I think it, he has the ability to arc onto the dragon as well. So we have like seven spears near the dragon, mind you. And then we have, I think, one or two spears in the middle of the enemy burst side. We have some spears literally in the middle formation of the enemy formation. Like, he just killed Gazul with his procs. And I think he also killed Tok because there was no burn damage on it. So the thing about that is it's crazy how far he can go right like he still has spears and i think i counted it last time i'll check he had like 10 to 15 spears up on the field and he can only uh, a spear lasts like 15 seconds and he can have like 10 to 15 of them on the field it's insane it's honestly insane so that is a lot of damage you are able to dish out with that one hero again Level 70, very, very under-researched drag. So again, another fight, uh, just as a basic example, right? Same thing that I have, same values, same abilities, and nothing changed. Now this one, I mean, the data logs show a lot more, but I think it was against a stall side. So that is kind of explanatory, because he's hitting a lot of invincibilities and stuff like that. So let's show it. So first spear lands. It should land somewhere near. Yeah, so it landed right here near the dragon. Rufia would have stunned this hero, but the hero was not stunned. So he landed one or two spears already on the same part. He is stacking the physical resistances and doing tiny bits of damage. So the same as here. He landed one or two spears here already. Reducing resistances, Lee's doing more damage. He landed spears into the middle formation of the enemy. Even reaching other buffers, like closer to the enemy's burst. He procced some of these heroes to invincibility. He procced some of these heroes just to the left of the dragon to invincibility. Killed Tok. He might even kill uh, Gan with the dragon's damage taken. Gan just died. A couple of heroes here also died. That's Drac. That's pretty much Drac not being CC'd and just procking those insane range spears that he has. And he procked them when he was still just in front of the dragon where you see this, I guess, glowing ball or whatever this golden thing is. I don't even know. And from that range, he was procking those spears close to the enemy dragon. And that is what he does. He killed a few heroes. And those few heroes dying reduced enemies' attack, reduced enemies' HP, because prism arrays, all that kind of stuff. And that is what a drag who's not, you know, disarmed or CC'd can do. And that is why I kind of use him. So the thing is, I'm going to be playing that. I mean, people should try it out and see how it goes for them. I mean, I don't care if people copy that or whatever. But even some people over 4,600 tried it and are still using it. So, I don't know. It's, uh, it's pretty decent. But yeah, that is what I kind of figured out, what I am using. But I'm going to do more extensive testing on higher tier drags. 
and whether or not this is kind of viable the further you go but who knows it's honestly pretty fun and uh it's it's pretty 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 decent but yeah that's pretty much it hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you learned something new if you did do hit that subscribe button it would help me out a lot plus if you would wish to support me more than just watching my videos i have made a patron page where you would be able to do just that in return, I would be able to help you out more individually in terms of events, PvP formations, and stuff like that. As well as I would like to thank all of my patrons for the support. I really, really appreciate it for your subscriptions. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe out there.